The business uh, um, facet of the film industry really starts in Chicago and New York. And uh, as they got more and more into filming, there were limitations in those climates because, of course, a big part of the year is very cold. The winter of 1908 was especially brutal. Business largely shut down. It was just too cold to go outside and it was just too much rigmarole. The other problem was that shooting indoors wasn't any easier because the lighting rigs at that time were especially temperamental and were uh, prone to blowing up and catching fire and you know, buildings burned down. Because of the state of technology at that point, they depended a lot on natural sunlight. And so, of course, they were looking for places that had, you know, extensive natural sunlight. Thomas Edison, uh, the Wizard of Menlo Park, as he was known, he, he was, I dare say, something more akin to the Mafia in the sense of his protection of his patents. So he created what was called the Motion Picture Patents Company, or what was known uh, colloquially as the Trust. And he essentially asked all the filmmakers to come join him in um, basically a, a protected group of film, industry, film companies that could use all of his patents, could use all of his connections. But if you were outside that group, you were completely blackballed. Well, one of the byproducts of the Trust was a number of these film companies who were in and around New York where the industry was largely based, they scattered. They really ran to get away from them. And they went to as far as uh, Cuba, they went to the Bahamas, they went to Arizona, and they went out west to California, and they went to Florida. The heads of Calum said, forget it. We're going outside, we're gonna make a movie. We're, we're not gonna be kept inside for the season. So what they did is they wrote a script called Washington at Valley Forge. The production was completely marred. People got sick, people got hypothermia, they lost fingers, and it was a complete failure. And so there are these people looking for, these film people, looking for a place where they can film outdoors for most of the year. Jacksonville was uh, attractive because Jacksonville was one of the first major cities in Florida. In fact, for this part of Florida, it was the major city. And the major railroad lines all uh, came together here. This is where people came from either the north or from the west. <laughs> Arlington is one reason it developed so well. It's got the bluffs on the river. If you know, it's the only part of Jacksonville that has the high bluffs, really thick swamps, and it it looked tropical. The heads of Calum said there has to be a better way to make movies. So they sent one of their scouts out and asked him to just simply find a place that we can go make movies. After a day or so of travel, he gets down to Jacksonville gets off the train at this big, beautiful train depot, sees a city that has uh, post offices and churches and a large metropolitan infrastructure in place. And he sends word back to New York, like, I think I found our new home. Jacksonville has a rich film history dating back to 1907. Calum um, was the first to set up shop, and they filmed their first season, which was during the winter, about 18 one-reelers or flickers and uh, this is before Hollywood became Hollywood. The Calum Studios produced uh, the first films in Florida in 1908 uh, under the banner of the Sunny South series. It just so happened that the Sunny South series were a number of films uh, that portrayed Floridians in extremely poor light. Their, their first film, called um, A Florida Feud or Love in the Everglades, was about a husband and wife fighting and the husband killing his wife and dragging her into the swamp. And the people, when they screened this film, the people in Florida thought it was horrible, this is libel, this is painting us in a terrible light. The only problem was the rest of the country said, did you see what this looked like? The palm trees and the sun and the outdoors, it was like nothing they had ever seen because film had never experienced location filmmaking before. So it was staggering to look at and it was a huge success. And that's what established filmmaking in Florida.
In 1901, there was a, a fire that completely devastated Jacksonville, and essentially the city had to completely start over. So the next day, the mayor, Jet Bowden at the time, sent out an RFP to all the architects he could find around the country, saying, come to our city, help us rebuild. Architects came from New England, Chicago, New York, the Carolinas, Texas. Well, the byproduct of that was that inadvertently the first studio backlot had been built. They would discover that they could shoot downtown Manhattan and they could shoot plantation scenes from the Carolinas. They could shoot New England. And with the St. John's running through town, uh, the St. John's doubled for the Nile, it doubled for the Amazon, it doubled for the Mississippi. Jacksonville, like Florida generally, was really just developing in terms of being uh, uh, metropolitan areas and there were people who were very eager to attract whatever industries that they could. There was a gentleman named uh, Jet Bowden who was mayor. He was the film industry's biggest film booster. He sent out messages to the public that if you see a filmmaking location write to our office and tell us where it is. When there were film premieres he was there introducing the film. He would walk what their version of the red carpet was. He wrote uh, letters to the, the film unions uh, and film groups in Los Angeles telling them that Jacksonville can match Los Angeles with for every vista. We've got rivers, we've got beaches, we've got every postcard vista you could possibly want and we'll make it as easy for you to come to town and make movies uh, as possible. We will make it easier than Los Angeles. Jacksonville became a uh really known as the winter film capital of the world and that's the way it was marketed and so there was during this time about 1912 to 1914 where we had more production activity in Jacksonville than we did in Los Angeles. And about 30 film studios come to town uh, not just a bunch of small one-off one-man operations but uh, Metro Pictures which is the first M and MGM uh, Fox which is a precursor to 20th Century Fox came to town uh, and Technicolor, uh, they put the very first Technicolor film ever made uh, was in 1916 uh, called the, uh, A Golf Between. Gomet, Selig, uh, other companies called Biograph and Lubin are some other companies that set up as well. And how Lionel Barrymore got his start right here. Mary Pickford was here in Jacksonville as well. Oliver Babe Hardy got his start here. So there's a number of well-known uh, actors from that period that got their start right in Jacksonville. Jacksonville had a thriving film community at the turn of the 20th century. It started in 1908. 
I also knew that uh, David Horsley, who founded the first studio, uh, Centaur Film Studio, on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood, he started his studio in 1911. So I had figured out that Jacksonville actually predated Hollywood. I had figured out that Jacksonville actually predated Hollywood.